Yeah, hello everybody and good evening and welcome to our second session of our Tap with 3 service station. Uh, one hour of live Tap with 3 support where you can ask questions via chat or Stack Overflow or um, even via direct call in that we can do with Slack. So if you have anything that you uh, want to ask or if you have some problems with Tab 3, feel free to ask us um, with uh, one of the things I told you. Um, I have something uh, from last time that I would like to pick up again today because uh, Boris already sent us a nice gift uh, which was uh, picked from our Amazon wish list so thank you for that and actually um, I have a solution for you in return actually I didn't have the solution last time because it was not really um, what he was asking for but uh, now I uh, thought about it again and we can uh, dig into that a bit deeper later on so um, we have to go to Stack Overflow um, because the basic idea is that we will have something like a list of uh, questions that uh, will then be available for the public too so it's not about just doing this in the video here uh, and in the live session so we want to ask uh, and answer questions uh, that will be useful for the whole Tablet 3 community and everybody who's using Tablet 3 later on so the idea is to do most of the stuff on Stack Overflow to um, just get away a, a bit from uh, all the different channels that we are using like Facebook here and some other groups there and some forums here and there so Stack Overflow would be the way to go. Um, I already have a list uh, open here which I already scrolled uh, through a bit because last time we wasted a bit too much time uh, by just finding some questions uh, so I just picked some uh, questions before. If you have questions yourself, feel free uh, to ask them in between and we can switch uh, anytime and try to ask uh, to answer them. So um, I would like to go to the one that we um, had last time. I guess you remember this one. People who uh, joined us last time will uh, know this, which was about the database query processor. Actually, we have a tutorial about the uh, database query processors uh, and all data processing stuff with Fluid templates, which you can see in the video section. It's on available on YouTube too, so if you're interested in data processors as such, you should go to the, uh, this uh, and watch uh, this video. Um, this is a very specific thing that we are trying to solve here and now um, the basic problem is there is an additional field. This additional field is uh, connecting to another um, table and getting um, in this case some I think items, top offer items which are connected um, to pages. The point is this should be done only when there are some items and if there are none you want uh, we want to go up the root line and try to find stuff uh, which is uh, available there so the idea was to do it with a kind of slide and actually I tried to answer the same thing last time where I said yeah let's do it with a kind of slide and you have to register the field to be available in the root line but it doesn't make much sense because in this case you will just get the number um, of items which is connected and if there is a number you can slide it up then you have the number but you don't have the ID so uh, we need another approach there and now the idea is uh, to do it slightly different and I will just go to the fluid template section and to the data processing part and as you can see there are several different data processors like the files processor and the database query processor which you already had in the question but um, in my opinion it would be a good idea to do this uh, with a menu processor because uh, the menu processor will provide a root line menu then so the idea would to go be to go down here you can maybe just copy that part and go to php storm now Okay. By the way, uh, we changed uh, some of the audio settings because some people complained about the uh, audio being 
not loud enough. Um, hopefully, um, it's understandable now because there is a kind of uh, compressor filter that we were able to activate in the software, which is actually doing the stream. So it should be a bit louder, even when I'm uh, talking not that loud. Uh, so you could uh, hear. So if you are in the chat and you can just confirm this, uh, that would be nice. Okay. Um, so as you can see, we have this one in here. And um, the first idea was to do it with a database query processor. But in my opinion, it should be done with a menu processor, but not with a special directory, but uh, with another way of menus. And to get that, we can go to the H menu section in TypeScript because um, actually, I will just uh, go to the window without the cam. Actually, the menu processor is just creating the TypeScript setup of H menus and all the other menus um, that are available in TypeScript, but with a slightly different syntax and it will provide all the data within a nice um, array so that you can then access these arrays, even nested arrays and stuff like that uh, on the uh, fluid level and you can debug them. So the idea is to switch to another um, type of menu, which would be the root line menu. So special should be root line and then we need a range and the range should be from actual zero, which is the root page. And um, we want to include the current uh, page too. So this is something that we can try now and let's see if this is going to work. Um, just have to switch back. So the idea is to have a root line in here and then we need the range, which is not a value in here. Just have to check that again in the yeah, special is range and not value. And then we will have zero to minus one. So this will include the current page, which is uh, the one that we have um, fetched with the minus one value, because minus one is a negative value. And uh, all negative values are relative to the current page. So this means um, when I go and have minus one, this is the current page, minus two is one page up in the hierarchy, so this would be the parent page, minus three would be uh, the grandparent page and so on. So it's always relative to the page where you are. So in this case we just make sure that we start at the current page and we always, always go uh, all the way down uh, or back um, to the actual root page. And this is why we go for um, this one here. Um, we don't need any other thing here because actually it doesn't matter if there is a title or whatever. And now comes the interesting part because we can nest menu processors and query processors and even other processors. So what we can do is we have data processing as a surrounding value. So actually this was wrong, so it should be like this. And now we can just copy the whole block and put it into the section. Of course, we don't need that block. We don't. We need this one. So we can now copy that. And as you can see, we have the query processor in here. Ten would be enough. We don't need two hundred. We can still go to the table tx, my x, top offer item, whatever. So this is correct. We don't need a recursion. We can still join 
other things um, of the MM table or whatever. Uh, so this might be slightly different. I will not run a test because I don't have the extension actually available. But uh, we can um, add the PID in list here because, of course, the PID in list would be the field which is provided by the surrounding menu processor. Because when you go to the menu processor and you run through all the menu items, each time you render a menu item, uh, or if you are using a data processor, if you process a menu item, all the field values of that menu item, which is actually a page, um, are put into the C object data array. So you can access them within the nested processor. So in this case, it would be PID and list field. And of course, this would be UID because the UID of the page is the PID of the records that we want to get. So in this case, you would uh, get this one here. And if I remember correctly, there should be um, at least a number of items available in the field, which is actually holding um, the value here. So I will just switch Actually, you don't have to switch, it's easy. So we just have to check if there is a kind of if or whatever in the data processor and where to put it. So I will just go to the Chrome window and back to the data processor. And now we have to check if there is something like if or whatever available for data processing. one, two, or whatever. Yeah, we have at least something available here, which is if. And I think, since it's already available for the common separate value processor as well, I think at least uh, it feels like that, that we can just use if on the level of the data processing itself. So. We can go in here if is true should be enough because we just want to make sure it's not the zero and the field in this case is um, the one that we found in the TCI. I just have to check if it's the same field name here. So let's go back to the actual description because as I, as I remember exactly there's a tx my x top offer item and this should be one here so if the field is true which means there are some items in that field. In the field itself, you will just get the number of items. If the field is true, then do the database query processor. And the database query processor should fetch all the items which are connected to the PID of the field, which is provided by the UID value of the page that we are currently rendering in the menu. I will not take care of all the where's and order buys and the as here but in my opinion this should deliver at least an array of root line pages that you can loop through and there should be only one um, thing available and maybe it's a good idea because the root line usually is done from root page to the current page we should add another parameter here. Uh, so I will just check for the fluid template H menu. If I remember correctly, you can exactly you can uh, do a reverse order here. So it would be just have to 
close the Chrome window, special reverse order is activated. So we will go back from the root line, uh, root, uh, from the current page to the root page. So the first item that you should see, the first uh, delivered items should be the ones uh, that you want to fetch. So you can ignore the rest. Um, just to um, explain it again, we have the special root line. This creates a root line from the current page back to the root uh, page itself. Uh, you will reverse the order uh, so that you will actually have the current page as the first item and the root page as the last. Um, we will maybe we should call it root line here and not header menu. And um, then we use another data processor within the menu processor. And if there is something in a field of the pages, which is TX myx top of item, then we render uh, the items of that particular table with the database query processor, which has been already provided by the um, original poster of the question. So I will copy that as a solution now to the Chrome window. And now we got an answer here. It seems that it's better to make use of nested data processing here. So first get a root line menu and then fetch the items that belong to a specific page of that menu. And we can just, okay. No, it doesn't make sense like this. We can just skip it here, put that in here, mark it and then make it code. St still the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. I think it was the other one. Yeah, code sample, that's the one, exactly. Okay, so I think this should be the answer. Um, just one thing that I mentioned um, the last time that we discussed things from Stack Overflow, it would be really, really nice if you take your time and at least mark one of the correct answers if that helped you. Because there are people taking their time, just as I do cu uh, currently, but there are many other people doing the same thing. They are offering their spare time to find out what is uh, your problem and to help you. So it would be really, really nice if you just click on the um, that's uh, the right answer or if you upvote answers and other things so that you uh, and even downward answers which are wrong so that you can help people who will then come to your question and find the same solution that you found. So this is one of the reasons why we why it took quite some time to um, get through the items when we did it the first time last week because um, we were on Stack Overflow, we uh, clicked on a filter so that we said, so okay, we want to see only unanswered questions and actually most of them were already answered but not marked. So this is not very nice, I think. Okay, so this was the first one for today. Are there any other questions? I see at least two people are watching. So if you have any questions yourself, feel free to ask them now in the chat. If not, I will just go to another question that we picked from Stack Overflow and maybe we can help uh, these people as well. Okay. So we now have just one visitor, so maybe 
you are afraid to ask, you don't have to be afraid. So you can ask whatever you like. It, it could, can be beginner's uh, questions or uh, even um, questions which are not closely uh, related um, to Tab 3. Just came in. Hi. Ah, okay. So I think uh, you just missed the solution that we uh, provided uh, for your um, for your question from last time. Um, I will just scroll down a bit so that you can actually see it. But I, I think you will already have a message from Stack Overflow that there has been an answer. So basically, the idea is to um, just split that into two separate uh, processors because you can nest them and one will provide the root line the other one will provide the items and then you can um, run through that in uh, fluid do some loops and render uh, the items that come back i don't know exactly if it's possible uh, to stop um, uh, it but i think um, it should be possible to have a kind of counter in fluid itself so that you can then access uh, the items and just get the first one and stop then so that you don't have all the other items if there are more in the root line. So in my opinion, this should be working. Uh, if not, we can still modify it a bit. So um, feel free to test and come back if something is not working. Still, you can stay here now because uh, maybe you have some other questions and we can answer them too. Okay, um, I will just go to another question how to use disable prepended copy in combination with all language synchronization. Um, as far as I can see, uh, there is TCE main table sys file reference disable prepended copy. I don't know if this is uh, the one that helps in that situation because if I remember correctly, disable prepended copy is only for copies but not for translations. I'm not sure. We will check that. Um, so we should go to disable prepend add copy. Okay, this is the article. This doesn't help that much, but we can still look for it. Should be yeah, at least in the TS config reference. I will just show the other um, references uh, again, which I did last time, or maybe you can just have a look at the session from last time, which is available in the videos, because in uh, that session, I explained the different resources that you should use when you're trying to find solutions, for example, for TypeScript, the TypeScript reference, or TSConfig reference, or even other API related documentations, which are quite um, good and really uh, well structured and um, there are a few people, just a few people, uh, unfortunately, but th there should be more um, who are um, doing a really, really great job there. So um, when you take a look at the video, you will find all the resources that you need uh, to uh, find answers for uh, type uh, type of script and type of three related questions. Okay, so we have the um, disable prepend at copy thingy here prepend add copy and disable hide add copy but as you can see this will just prepend or hide the messages um, pages will not have copy appended when you copy them but this doesn't mean that uh, this is the same thing if you translate them and if I see it correctly there is something here and uh, I will go to the window without the cam so you can see it too there is something let's uh, that is called translate to message and as far as I can see this is something that will replace exactly um, the term which is mentioned in the question because yeah that's translate to so I guess it should be something like TCE main translate to message and then do something. We can even test that on our um, likes cooking page if this is already online again. Yeah, looks like this.
Okay, this was not the right login. I will just use another one. Still the wrong one? Okay. Okay, it doesn't work currently because I think there's some problem with the database in the backend. Uh, so I will just go to the other page here. Um, maybe we can check if this is available for the Title III version because if I remember correctly, it was correct to do it with um, this able pre copy once. So maybe we can go back here and try to find out if this parameter has been there, for example, with 8.7. As far as I can see, it is not. So, just put something already to the answer box here, so we already have it available. Translate to message. Translate to message. Well, it's still there. So um, it was available with 8.7 as well, so it's not very new, but um, it seems to be uh, mistaken with a prepended copy. Okay, so this will be our answer. I will just need another TCE main setting here try the following code and now we can mark that as the code of course this is not a german label but nothing so i will Try it like this. If this does not work, maybe you can disable it by this code. Because most of the parameters in type of uh, script can be disabled by doing this. I, I'm not quite sure currently, um, so we will find out as, as soon as the other one who asked the question actually tried it themselves. So um, this would be the answer for this question. We still have two. Ah, this helped me disable hide it copy. Yeah. Yeah, hide and pre and copy, of course, this is, but this is not related to the translations. You will always get, um, I will just um, activate the window with the chat messages because then it w might be visible a bit better. No, it's not because uh, the chat was too late. So still it's in the chat when you go to the um, video and you watch the video on Twitch because then you will see that. But I will just... Um, uh, maybe you can answer that on um, Stack Overflow yourself because um, this will help um, getting the right answer. Maybe you can even add a comment or whatever, or maybe you can put it there as your own answer. So um, just look for um, how to use disable prepended copy with a tag type of 3 on Stack Overflow. This would be nice. Okay. Still we have two watchers. I think most of the other watchers are currently at the Type 3 camp in Venlo. So um, if you're watching from there and if you are watching a video maybe later on, have fun. And uh, this time we will not make it to Venlo, but we decided to go to Vienna this year instead because we are on quite a lot of different camps um, 
we have to make some decisions sometimes. So unfortunately, this time the decision is to go to Austria and not to the Netherlands. So sorry for that. Um, okay, I found some other questions which might be interesting. For example, we have the get list of front end users with TypeScript can't get the names of the associated user groups. This sounds interesting because actually it should not be that hard to do. So let's see what happens here. Um, by the way, if you are one of the watchers and you have an idea yourself, feel free to just um, add this to the chat messages or uh, maybe even go to the ticket and give your uh, answer there so that we can discuss it later on. So um, let's check what happens here. We have a text field. In the text field, um, we have a user group, which is then split up by a token. I think this should be easier when we go for the um, UID in list in this case, because then it's already a list of UIDs. We can check that. So for example, I would go to the type of trip reference again. And this is a function in this case of TypeScript, which is select. So let's see if it's in here. Yeah, there's a select. And yes, I remember correctly, it is UID in list and it's PID in list. So there is actually no need to do a split here because you will get all the user groups when you go to um, that part and just uh, put in the UID list. So let's pick up this one because this is the one that which has been tried. If I remember correctly, this was done with a because the endware is deprecated, so the you need something else to deal with. Okay, so let's replace that code here, and I will just go to the PHP Storm window now. So we have something in here, which is the text, which is not necessary, so we can actually directly go to the content element and then we can just use okay there seems to be something yeah this is completely out of order here because yeah this is the problem as far as I can see. So we have a table, FE groups. We have a select in here, which is a PID in list 22. And then we have something which is the actual render object. So the render object seems to be in the wrong place. And we need the UID in list up here. So let's see. PID in list, UID in list, of course. And I have to go back to the actual window where the question was asked because we have the field user group. Okay, just have to check to be on the safe side. If the UID in list property has standard web properties itself, yes, it has. So we can use the field property for the UID in list property. Okay, so this would be field and the field name is, just have to check that in the original one. I think it was user group. Yeah. Okay. Back to PHP storm. Field is user group. PID in list is 22. We can do this because the user group field in type of three, um, or maybe in at, at least in uh, in this case, 
contains a comma separated list of values anyway. So you have a list of comma separated values, which is actually um, recommended or not recommended, but requested by the UID in list here. So you have one, two, three separated with commas, and that's exactly the value that you will find in the field user group. So it doesn't make much sense to split that up to just fetch something which you then get back and then you have user groups available but you have to connect them again so in this case it's uh, better to do it to do it like this so we have the user groups here we have a peer in list where um, current uh, is the rep uid is yeah i don't think does it, it, it makes much sense here because when the UID is one, I have to check that in the in the original code again. This looks a bit weird. If w one of the watches has an idea what is uh, this is meant to be, we have and we wrap UID. No, it's just current. Okay, so there is a current value that you want to hand over to, which is not necessary here. We just don't need that. This is just a remainder uh, of the split before, because split sets the current value, and then you can compare that. Um, but it doesn't make much sense here. So actually, we want to get the UID list, the PID list, and in the render object, we want to render the title. So actually, this should be it just have to check again yeah, and there was actually an additional where which is title not like network we can add that too but actually it was not available in the tested code uh, anyway so we don't need that for the solution Okay, so it looks much more streamlined now, and now we can put that to the answer section on Stack Overflow. So currently the average amount of answer questions is much better than last time because we have already three questions that we were able to provide with the proper solution you should not split up the comma separated values but go for UID in list instead this way you get rid of the surrounding split section uh parameter uh, oh no yeah no, doesn't matter um surrounding split and fetch the elements within just one go okay mark that as a code and post that as an answer Okay, there is a message at least. You have unread inbox messages. Oh, it's just the Stack Overflow community moderator election. Not that much into the Stack Overflow community that I would even know uh, who to vote for, so nothing important. And as you can see, there are some things. TypeScript, AWS, query, slider field is empty. Ah, plus 10. So somebody gave me some credits for this, okay. And 
this is something which uh, which I meant um, which should be done regularly when you go somewhere and you see the questions and you find r answers that seem to be right or that you seem to uh, you think are, are the correct solution for this problem you should at least mark them and tell other people yeah this is the right thing to do because uh, this will help a lot when you have not just one answer like uh, in the type of three uh, sections because in many cases the type of three uh, questions are not answered that frequently and that much uh, but there are other sections on stack, uh, stack overflow where you have tons of answers and it is really really nice if you actually know which one is uh, the um, way to go and which one should not be used um, the way it is supposed to be in, in the answer so uh, you should even do that if you're not asked the question yourself but you know something about it okay um so let's go back to the solution before oh now we have four watches so if you want to have answers for your own questions feel free to ask them in the chat now we still have 20 minutes left so if it's not that complicated like the one uh from Boris that we uh, answered um, in the first place uh, today, which was a bit more complicated. It took me um, not a whole week, but uh, we were not able to answer it properly last time. But if it's uh, not that complicated, maybe we can even find a solution now. Um, otherwise, I will go to the questions tag top of three and try to find some more. Best way to register content element to type drop down. Okay, this sounds interesting. So let's see if it is already answered. There's a difference between content element types and plugins in type of three. Registered plugins will not be shown available separately. Okay. Okay, this is just um, uh, a question why it is should be done with add plugin or if it's uh, something else. Okay, we have another watcher, Ismail. Can we do something for you? Do you have some questions that you want to ask? Still, you have 18 minutes left. So we can find a solution for you. I will close this one now because it's uh, nothing I can answer currently. Okay, maybe we find something on the other pages. We write URLs only in PHP. Tab 3 backend usability when using Bootstrap and Grid elements. Okay. And we had that l the last time, and so it was just a discussion about the you know, different ways. And I, I think I gave the answer in the video, so. Uh, when you want to know something about this question, just uh, go back to the video list in our Twitch channel or maybe on the YouTube channel and you will find it in the first Type 3 service station session where I uh, said something about these problems. Okay. Solar, this is not my favorite topic because I'm not a specialist for that. There might be other people like the guys from DKT who actually provide the solar plugin. I just got into coding and I cannot learn how to code properly where or how can I learn how to code? Okay, this is a really, really good question because <laughs> uh, there are many, many sources. Actually, it depends on the way, um, actually, it depends on the languages that you want to learn how to code. For example, when I started um, with uh, coding websites and stuff like that uh, a, a long, long time ago, um, there were not so many sources, but uh, I had to learn HTML and JavaScript and CSS. Or is it more like I want to know how to code in PHP or how to code in um, other languages? So first of all, this would be um, a thing that you have to answer for yourself. Uh, where do I want to go? Because um, based on this decision, 
uh, maybe we can give you some uh, helpful answers and maybe even the other people in the chat can tell you where to go. I'll just uh, go through the pages while we are waiting for the answer because uh, as far as I remember there's a kind of delay between what I'm saying now and as uh, soon as I see something in the chat I can get back to the answer so uh, I will just try to xlib localization extension is not working as expected okay We have the original local lang file, which seems to be correct. Transunit ID is something here, and there's the same transunit ID. And we have a target and the source language. The English page should show original, the German page should show contact.de. But both resulting in contact.de. Okay. Just have to check that here. Language DE is right, so this language ready is zero, that's right. Local all is right too. Switch to English, it's here. So from my point of view, everything seems to be right. This might be related to a bug. Yeah. So from my point of view, it, it seems uh, to be correct. So I'm ca I cannot help that much uh, with that question. Let's go to the next one. Ah, and I'm learning JavaScript and I'm kind of getting the hang of it, but I cannot make beautiful code. Okay, um, then you need some sources uh, about JavaScript. And um, the point is that uh, this channel currently is about Type 3 and giving uh, answers to Type 3 related problems. There is some JavaScript which is related to Type 3, but when it's just about um, writing beautiful code and other things, uh, I think you might want to look for coding guidelines um, on Google and have coding guidelines for JavaScript um, and maybe even guidelines how to write object-oriented uh, JavaScript or um, how to do things uh, better. Um, I think um, even Stack Overflow can be uh, of help for that. Maybe you can take a look at another tag here because maybe this already helps you a bit further. So let's see if we find something. Yeah, JavaScript. Uh, oh, that's uh, quite a lot. You have 1.7 million questions and answers here. Um, so still, let's go to this tag and then let's try to find something. Um, best practice coding guide lines. This would be the one um, that I would be looking for. Actually, it's not that helpful because there are specific questions. I think Stack Overflow is not the right channel for that because um, they expect you to have a specific problem that you ask questions for and not, not a general question like how do I write beautiful code. Um, so it's not that helpful in this case. So I don't think we can help you currently because um, in this channel uh, we are more dedicated to type 3 related questions. But maybe I can find something for you um, until the next session which will be next week. So. Um, I will try to find some sources um, that will be useful for people who actually want to learn how to code with JavaScript and how to do it properly. Um, 
so I can provide something uh, with an extension if this is okay for you. Okay, I will switch back to the Tava 3 tech here. And maybe we can find um, one for the last 10 minutes over here. How to get items from these categories. This sounds interesting. There is already one answer. Four categories and in total 3,000 items and four levels. I found a way from Type 3 self by collection, but I must add them to the category menu. I saw the Type 3 block extension takes another way by an extra column post and the object storage in the model categories. Okay, this is already done with Query Builder and uh, creating additional stuff, so it's the way to go here. So actually, this is already answered. Clearly out cache and basic out of the DCA default text. Type 3 9 using the type 3 crop function for CSSEO social media images. So in this case, we should um, actually know if there is a crop available for the images. So maybe we can check that now. Yeah, have a nice evening too. So hopefully I will find something for um, you for uh, the next session. Okay, I think we have something on our coders care page because we make use of that extension there, so I'll just go there. You can just check it here because there should be some SEO related images, social media, and here is the sustainability image. And we have, yeah, we have a crop here, so at least the crop is available. This is something that we actually checked now. And we have a parameter here, see object is file import. And then we have, yeah, I think the point is that we don't have the file in here. Because it has been destroyed by this line. So I guess there should be a bit more than just C object file import because when you just um, completely remove the file setting here, you need to add at least the basic settings again. So let's check the type of script here. And we can do that in the TypeScript object browser. And as far as I see, there is page.meta, which should be available here too. Page meta, yeah, here we go. And then we have page meta Twitter. No, it's not there. So I think this is something that is not directly in here. Description keywords publisher. Maybe we can just take a look at the extension itself, which should be 
and here yeah so there should be the code in the type of script I will go to the window without the cam in the type of script of the CS SEO extension and should be in configuration type of script setup meta Twitter cards for example that's header data that's not page meta so we can check if there is anything like page meta in here page dot meta yeah at least we have something in here but it's not so we all just have to look for meta itself it's forms in power mails that's not our problem here we have a page meta here and here JavaScript setup meta ts yeah this sounds we were in the right place and still we have some additional meta folder so we are actually correct here so let's see if we have something here which is still header data so I guess that the whole uh, setup is uh, slightly different to the one which is uh, um, used in here still i will just write it down as an answer because we are close to the one hour time limit that we have for this session you should i'll just go to the other window so you should get rid of the oh, not, not either get rid of the line that removes the file setting completely or over right and disable disable the settings within the file section without not all and because of course when you disable that you have to do it in the other way the settings within the file section without um, that's it okay so bad line no. should be since this destroys the rest of the setup okay just make this a code snippet. Yeah. Post your answer. Okay, we're close to one hour now. Um, we were able to answer four questions today, which is quite good from uh, my point of view. If you have uh, your own questions and you want to ask them, maybe even beforehand, you should put them on Stack Overflow. So uh, you just have to make sure that they are available for the next session so that we can discuss them there. Um, if you want to make a call in, you can just do that with via the Type of 3 Slack. So when you're registered for Type of 3 and you're already in the Type of 3 Slack, you can do a private call um, so that we can have a kind of call in and really discuss things live. So uh, hopefully this was helpful for 
uh, some of you live watchers and even for the people who watch that in the type of three um, videos that we are providing on Twitch and on YouTube later on. If you really like that, um, make sure uh, that you follow us on Twitch because we need at least 50 followers because otherwise we will not be able to be a Twitch affiliate and being a Twitch affiliate means you can donate or other people can donate, you don't have to do it yourself. But um, just make sure that we have enough followers, tell your friends, um, tell the rest of the Type of 3 community. So as soon as we reach 50 followers, uh, we will be able to get some donations for what we are presenting here. Um, thanks so far, have a nice evening and see you next week. Bye.